Hello, everyone, and welcome to the OHSAA Region 8, Division 2, Regional Finals in Piqua. I'm Jennifer Beck with Jacob O'Neill on camera, and we are excited to bring you these regional finals. This is a big deal, folks, because the top four in each race are heading to state next week at the University of Dayton. Our broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens, Ultimate Outdoor. Our first event is going to be the girls 100 meter hurdles. And here's who we have in the finals. Lane one, Caitlin Gardner of Ostego. Lane two, Sally Altenberg of Oakwood. Lane three is supposed to be Kylie Adams of Bell Fountain. Don't see her. Lane four, Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan. Five, Addison Mattern of Springfield Shawnee. Six, Angela Williams of Dayton Northrop. Molly Kramer of Ostego in seven. And just Lacia Proctor of Meadowdale in eight. Let's take a look at the board to see who our finishers are. Our eyes are on Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan. And she is your champion in this regional, and she will move on next week to state. Event number four, it's the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Our eyes are on lane one, Aiden Rose of Coldwater, lane six, Dane Dooling of Ottawa Glandorf, and lane seven, Eli McNeil of St. Mary's. Overall, here's who we have. Rose of Coldwater in one, Zion Woods of Chaminade Julian in two, Marcus Hubanks of Batavia in three, Corey Davis of Brookville. Your top time coming in does not appear to be there. He's supposed to be in lane four. Devontae Young of Dunbar in five, Dueling of Glen uh, Ottawa Glandorf in six, McNeil of St. Mary's in seven, and Sherjuan Robinson of Dayton North Northrop in eight. All right, first one over the hurdle. Looks like that is Young from Dunbar being challenged by Hubanks of Batavia. Remember, guys, it's the top four that make it to state. We're going to have to watch the results. That was pretty close for that fourth place finish. Let's see who we have once they bring that up. Young did get first. David second. Woods is third. And we're holding out for that fourth place finisher. It's McNeil from St. Mary's. So St. Mary's has a state qualifier in the 110 hurdles. This D2 regional track meet from Piqua has a presenting sponsor of Lodix Jewelry. Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. And in this next race, we've got a Van Wert runner as well as several other local runners. Here's who we have in our competition. Lane one, it's Ella Foreman of Springfield Shawnee. Lane two, Sierra Grieber of St. Mary's. Lane three, Ava Reeves of Bell Fountain. Lane four, Shania Coleman of Kenton Ridge. Lane five, Olivia Hill of Wyoming. Lane six, Kendra Deering of Van Wert. Lane seven, Tatum Walsh of Bath. And lane eight, Olivia Grothaus of Ottawa Glandorf. So we're watching lanes two, three, six, seven, and eight. And remember, the top four make it to state. It looks like we are holding off for a second because some issues with the blocks in lane seven, that'd be Tatum Walsh from Bath. They are, official is over there making sure or fixing whatever the problem is with those blocks. I just want to give a shout out to Bath's track team this year. Some really great uh, runs this year. It's really great to see so many athletes from Bath here at the regional meet. Just want to give a shout out to their coaches for doing such a great job training those runners. Also love the fact that we've got so many local uh, runners in this regional meet. We haven't done a regional for the past few years. Um, and some of that's because, you know, so many of the runners are from outside of our viewing area. But it's just been great to see how many of our local runners have made it to this, this position at this point. And we definitely look forward to continuing to watch them all the way at the state meet. Well, while they're still working on those blocks, just want to remind you that you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Got some new blocks for Tatum Walsh. She's checking those out. A full lineup here of ladies that will be vying their way 
to state. University of Dayton this year welcomes stadium, so it'll be a new venue for the state meet. We are excited to be there, and we are excited to continue bringing you track and field all the way through the end of the season. Top seed time coming in here is lane four. That's Shania Coleman from Kenton Ridge, and she ran a 12.24. The next fastest seed time is next to her. That's Olivia Hill from Wyoming, who ran a 12.49 last week. As we all know, especially all the sprinters know, the 100 is all about starts, coming out of that start, powering the body the way it's supposed to be, and the finish. Well, we have another wait. So the official had his arms up there. They were ready to go. They were down in the blocks. And then he bring his arms down uh, once again. Not exactly uh, the, the, the thing that a sprinter wants. You know, of course, a sprinter's got the mindset going and is ready to go. But official knows when everything has to be a certain way. And he's getting them just about ready to get them back in the blocks. All right, lanes two, three, six, seven, and eight are our local runners. And man, we are watching Shania Coleman. Look at that lady run her race. Finishing first place, but out there in lane two, Sierra Grieber from St. Mary's, a great run by her. Let's take a look and see what we have as our results here on that running board. Grieber, second place, St. Mary's with another runner making making it down to the state meet. Third place is Deering, Kendra Deering of Van Wert. And fourth place is Hill from Wyoming. Event number six, the boys 100 meter dash. We're watching lane one, Quest Clay of Indian Lake. Lane two is Garrett Lundy of Waynesville. Three is Peyton Mayfield of Milton Union. Four is Corey Heyer of Brookville. Five is Xavier Wilson of Thurgood Marlington. Devontae Young of Dunbar in six. Xavier Williams of Urbana in seven. And William Rapp of Bethel Tate in eight. The D2 regional track from Piqua has a presenting sponsor of Laudix Jewelry and a title sponsor of Ultimate Outdoor. Ultimate Outdoor, bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Here we have the girls four by 200 meter relay and we are focusing on lane three, St. Mary's, lane four, Ottawa Glandorf and lane five, Van Wert. Springfield Shawnee is in one, Madeira in two, St. Mary's in three, Ottawa Glandorf in four, Van Wert in five, Valley View in six, Meadowdale in seven, and Fenwick in lane eight. Set. Top seed time coming in is Ottawa Glandorf with a 143.33. Second top seed time is Van Wert in lane five with a 144.24. This is the girls four by two. Meadowdale, lane seven, off to a good start there. You can see her uh, increase in some stagger over there in lane five, Van Wert, and lane six, Valley View as well. We're watching the handoffs. Nice handoff there by Valley View in six. Remember, the girls are still in a stagger, and Van Wert is working to make up that stagger. Take a look at lane five. Strong running right there in lane five. Watch these handoffs. Valley View looks like they might have a slight, slight advantage over the rest of the crowd, but very close right there with Van Wert in five. Ottawa Glandorf's runner in four, nicely making up some ground. And 
using that backstretch very, very well. Ottawa Glandorf moving into nice prime real estate to set up for that final handoff. Oh, this is going to be a fun race to the end, folks. Valley View still had a very strong handoff. St. Mary's barreling down the straightaway, and it's going to come down to this final 100. Ottawa Glandorf, Ottawa Glandorf, folks. That's Ottawa Glandorf. I saw you saying St. Mary's, folks. That's Ottawa Glandorf moving away. Will they hold on? Will Ottawa Glandorf hold on? And they did it, folks. OG first place, Valley View second place. I think Van Wert was in third, but let's take a wait and watch the finish board to know for sure. Oh, Valley View did get it at the, at the edge. Valley View first, Ottawa Glandorf second. Van Wert is in third. Event number eight is the boys four by 200 meter relay. In lane one, Benjamin Logan. Lane two, Batavia. Lane three, Ottawa Glandorf. We just saw their girls finish in second place. Lane four, Waynesville. Lane five, Meadowdale. Lane six, Miami East. Lane seven, McNichols. And lane eight, out there in the corner, it's Elida. Set. Once again, our local teams that we are keeping an eye on, lane one, Benjamin Logan, lane three, Ottawa Glandorf, lane eight, Elida. Waynesville comes in with the top time of 129.89. They are already showing strength with that first runner, and they are the first handoff. Closed handoff there for Ottawa Glandorf, but they got it going. That's for Waynesville with the first handoff. Third runners now making their way around the track. Looks like Waynesville still was the top handoff there. Your view, honestly, is a little bit closer than mine. I'm way up top above the press box. <laughs> but it's a pretty good view because we got a great overview look. And wow, look at these solid runners. Take a look at Ottawa Glanderf moving up. Oh, look at that. I think OG might make it to the third spot. Waynesville, first place, 129.17. Second place, Miami East. Third place, Ottawa Glandorf, 129.80. And fourth place is Meadowdale. So OG boys, four by two, heading to state. Event nine is the girls' 1600 meter run. We have these competitors, Haley Nash of Graham Local. Next to her is Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf. Then Morgan Blair of Fenwick, Emily Greeley of Waynesville, Ella Rhodes of Wauseon, Riley Davis of New Richmond, Grace Brown of Bell Fountain, Kate Thormeyer of Bryan, Ruby Clark of Greenan, Ava Geiger of Wyoming, Amanda Zerhusten of McNichols, Samantha Erbach of Waynesville, Ruby Gross of Carroll, Claire Wilkes of Indian Hill, Nicolette Stickney of Bryan, and Emily Bryant of Oakwood. Four laps around the track. So got that grouping right there. That's the fun thing when we get to the regional uh, point is that grouping stays together longer. I love getting to this point in the season and seeing such top-notch athletes here as they compete for a chance to go to state. Top time coming in here is a 5-12-13, which is Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf. Already seen some great runs by Ottawa Glandorf so far this season. Right now leading the way, that's Kate Thormeyer. Actually, no, I'm sorry, that's not Kate Thormeyer from Brian. Kate is back a little bit ways. Ottawa Glandorf's Anna Bubbelmeyer, though, right there in second place. One lap down, three laps to go. Girls are running right about 112, 110 was your uh, leadoff top spots. Samantha Erbach of Waynesville is your current leader. She comes in with a 521.81 for her seed time. Nice strides there 
with those ladies on the back stretch, really utilizing the length that they can get with their legs from there. Almost looks like Anna Buttlemeyer just wants to, uh, wants to, what's it, she's gonna tuck in. She's gonna tuck in there. She's not gonna make a move at this point. She does come in with a 5 12 13. Makes me think that she has a system. She's got a plan. She is a junior from Ottawa Glandorf. Already seeing some stellar running from OG so far today. Both relays are making it in. Um, already have a sprinter that's made it in. It's going to be a fun time at University of Dayton next week. Welcome, Stadium. So remember, folks, it's the top four that make it. you got the top two pretty much further ahead there. But it's going to be a, a race there for three and four. And it does look like we got a Brian runner in that pack right now. Halfway to go. This is the point where the ladies got to think about what their next step of their, uh, their strategy is because there's only an 800 left, less than an 800 to go. Think about the 1600, it's a distance race with pace. Distance race with pace that picks up at this point. And we're seeing that back there along the back stretch. Jacob, if you can possibly get, you can get that other group too. So we can see what's going on in that third place. You see first place, uh, still have Samantha Erbach of Waynesville leading. Second place, Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf. Third and fourth place is gonna be interesting as we've got a pack of ladies. Five ladies there are gonna be vying for those final two spots. Ottawa Glandorf's Anna Buttlemeyer, the junior Hot, hot day today. The weather, um, the, the temperature is definitely rising. The, the, the wind is calm, which is nice, but these ladies are running under some hot sun. And this is it, this is the final 400. Samantha Erbuck, Waynesville, a senior, striding her way. But we've got Anna Bottlemeyer from Ottawa Glandorf in that second place spot. Holding on there in that back straightaway, getting close to that final 200. And I believe that's the Brian runner that has almost moved into fourth place and might be getting challenged there for that spot in that final 200. Okay, here they go, folks. Samantha Urbeck of Waynesville remains your leader. But let's keep our camera on Anna Buttlemeyer, our Ottawa Glandorf girl, as she runs her way in here. Can she hold on to that second place spot? There's a group of three ladies that are pushing their way up. Anna Buttlemeyer, just about 50 yards to go, 50 meters rather. And on a hot, hot day, she's going to have a nice PR from what she had last week. Oh, your winner dropped over under five minutes. Second place is Buttlemeyer. Congratulations to OG sending another girl, another runner to state. And your fourth place runner is from Brian. It's Kate Thormeyer. The boys 1600 meter run is coming up next. Our broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor and our presenting sponsor is Laudex Jewelry. Here's who we have in this race. Jacob Wireman of Bath is in one. Zhang Hong from Indian Hill. Next, Ty Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf. Ryder Crawford of Claremont. James McGrath of Indian Hill, Tony Stewart of Bell Fountain, Gregory Lang of Springfield Shawnee, Logan Arnold of Carroll, Wyatt Guckerman of Cincinnati CHCA, Case Roll of Preble Shawnee, Nicholas Dunn of Baden, Owen Scott, Van Wert, Cole Bat of Defiance, Enzo Battaglia of Fenwick, Landon er Arisman of Greenview, and Aiden Clendenin of Valley View. I talked about the grouping of the girls yesterday, or not yesterday, folks the last race. Me, it seems like yesterday. Has it been that long? I like a look at the grouping here of the guys. It's almost like a, like a, like a group of birds, how they are so close together, gathering together, but you got one runner who is setting the stage right there in the front. 
four laps to go. Taking a look at Van Wert. It's Owen Scott. He was moving into third. He's now back into fourth. Also watching for Ty Rosengarten from all of um, Ottawa Glandorf. So much fun to follow these runners all year long, get to this point, and then move on to next week. One, one lap is down, and our current leader is, what was that again, Jacob? I got Jacob on the camera. See. Number 451, that's Ryder Crawford is your current leader. And in second place, you have right now, Jacob, wonderful camera operator here helping me out. You can't see at the moment, but as you can see there, we got Owen Scott about in fourth spot and Ty Rosengarten in fifth. Top, top four are gonna make it to next week. That's Cole Bat of Defiance currently in second place. Cole comes in with a 428.99. Owen Scott comes in with a 424.47. Ty Rosengarten comes in with a 424.61. And Jacob Warman from Bath comes in with a 427.61. And just as I mentioned, Jacob Wireman, he's making a move as well as these guys are getting close to that halfway point. And it's going to be time to do some thinking. Only four will automatically qualify to next week. That's a group of 10 right there near the front. We're going to see interesting to see what's happening here as this, uh, this last two laps ensue. Looks like that might be Ty Rosengarten on the outside, possibly getting ready to make a move. Oh, making a change, deciding not to do that. Actually, I can't tell if that was Ty. Sorry, folks, if I am miscalling that portion of the race. In sixth, Ben Logan. Sun has gone under the clouds for just a moment. So unlike what the girls had in their 1600, the guys don't have quite as steamy of weather hanging over, over them as they run. This is a, a, a picture of what we're gonna see next week as state. You see how close this is? If you follow much track throughout the season, which I'm guessing you do, you, you know that a lot of times this race has a few runners way out at the front and then everybody else is so far back. But look at this, we are down to 400 and here is the junior from Van Wert, Owen Scott, moving his way into the front. Owen Scott with the sunglasses, got the braids and the long stride as these guys are down to just less than a lap to go. Oh, and here we go. The back straightaway is the place to make the move, and the moves are happening. You can already see the sprinting has picked up the pace, and this last 200 is going to be a lot of fun, folks. It's a 1,600 distance race that's turned into a mad dash sprint in this final 200. Take a look at Jacob Wireman from Bath also making his move there. Guys, it's the top four that are going to make it to state, and I don't know who's going to win at this point. Who has the stamina? Who has the strength to make it in this final backstretch? Ty Rosengarten, so close, so close. Wow, what a race, folks. What a race. It ended up being Arnold in first place, but Ty Rosengarten gets the second place spot. He's going to state next week. Owen Scott finishes in third place. We'll see him next week as well. And the Valley View runner finishes in fourth. Wireman from Bath, a great run. He gets fifth. Event 11, the girls' 4x100 meter relay is next. Our title sponsor for the D2 Regional Track Meet at Piqua is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. It's Ultimate Outdoor. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry. Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. Event number 11 is the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay. Lane 1 will be Napoleon. Lane 2 will be Dayton Northridge. Lane 3 will be Kenton Ridge. Lane 4, Ottawa Glandor. We've been saying that name quite a bit today in this meet. Lane five will be Bell Fountain. 
Lane six will be Van Wert, another name we've been reading quite a bit. Lane seven, Ostigo, and lane eight will be Madeira. Something to mention about the runners in from Bell Fountain. Lane five is that uh, their race for the four by one. We mentioned that in the 100 hurdles, we wondered where Adams was. She was not there. Well, it turns out she tweaked her hamstring on Wednesday which of course is a bummer. You know, this is the this is the time you don't want the injuries. She's still going to try to do this four by one and the 300, but she chose not Runners to do the 100 lane. hurdles. Lane four, Ottawa Glandorf. Top seed time of a 49.52. Lane five, Bell Fountain, and lane six, Van Wert. Set. Looks like that might have been Van Wert, one of the top handoffs. Very close, though. This race comes down so much to handoffs, straightaways, starts, and finishes. Van Wert coming out. Ottawa Glandorf moving up. Bell Fountain trying to hold on. And it's Van Wert. Let's hold on here and see the finish. Van Wert with a 49.05. Ottawa Glendorf coming in second, 49.43. Bell Fountain third, 49.55. And your fourth finisher to auto qualify is Dayton Northridge with a 49.67. So that's great runs by our local teams. Van Wert, Ottawa Glendorf, Bell Fountain. Looking forward to following them down to Dayton. Event 12, the boys four by 100 meter relay. We're watching lane two, Coldwater, and lane eight, Napoleon. Here's who we have overall. Lane one is Batavia, two, Coldwater, three, Cincinnati CHCA, four, Chaminade Julian, five, Waynesville, six, Taft, seven, Baden, and eight is Napoleon. The boys four by one. Set. Top seed time coming in here is Shamina Julian with 43 flat. They are in lane four. Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy with a 43.8. Waynesville with a 43.37. Coldwater close by there with a 43.49. They are in lane two. Nice clean handoff right there by Coldwater in two. Third runners making their way around, getting ready for that final handoff and the final picture. Taft in six, almost had a, a jerky handoff, but made it through. And man, that Taft runner is making his way in. Can the cold water runner make it into the fourth spot? Let's watch the, the, the that was close at the end. So Taft got first. Ladies and gentlemen. Shamana Julian got second. Announcement. Waynesville got third. Encore. Montgomery plates, lights, plates, G. Still holding N out to see who got that fourth place auto qualifier spot. Like I said, it was pretty close J there at the finish. G at the finish. Seven, three, two, nine. White, Buick, Encore. They move. And Napoleon, Napoleon gets it from lane eight. They are the next auto qualifier. Coldwater finishes in fifth. This D2 regional track meet at Pigwa 
as a presenting sponsor of Laudix Jewelry. Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. Also, Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls, and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. It's Ultimate Outdoor, our title sponsor for the D2 Regional Track Meet here in Pequa. The girls' 400-meter dash is the next race. We have in lane four, Tatum Walsh of Bath, really having a standout year this year. Also a great season for Sierra Grieber of St. Mary's. She is in five, and Bria Recker is in Ottawa, from Ottawa Glandorf is in seven. Valley View is in one, Oakwood in two, Indian Hill in three. It's Walsh from Bath in four, Grieber from St. Mary's in five, Road from Fenwick in six, Recker from Ottawa Glandorf in seven, and Fenwick has another runner in eight. Set. This is one lap around the track. The ladies will stay in their lanes for the entire race. Already you see Tatum Walsh picking things up as she heads out. Sierra Grieber also with a strong start in that first 200. Striding out on the straightaway, some nice big strides. Really like what Sierra Grieber's doing with her long strides there. And now here it comes, folks. The final 200 is where the story is told. This is where they pick things up and you're gonna start to see them move. Oh, take a look at Tatum Walsh. Take a look at her kick things in. Really has had such a great season. 57-17 was her seed time coming in, just a stellar run. And she is looking good right here as well. It's Tatum Walsh currently in first, but being challenged by Sierra Grieber from St. Mary's and Mackenzie Road from Fenwick currently in third. Bath's gonna get a regional champion, Tatum Walsh from Bath, finishing in first place with a time of 57.49. Your second place finisher is Sierra Grieber of St. Mary's, 57.70. Road from Fenwick, a 57.76 for third place. And your final automatic qualifier will be offered with a 58, 68, Allard rather, Allard from Oakwood and there's your top four auto qualifiers. Event 14, it's the boys 400 meter dash. Our eyes are on lane two, Elisha Reddick from Elida. Sophomore making it here to regional finals. Excited to watch him run. We also have Gerber from Indian Hill in lane one. That's Reddick from Elida in two. Mayfield from Milton Union in three. Martin from Finneytown in four. Wilson from Clinton Mass in five. Carson Young from McNichols in six. Russell from Meadowdale in seven, and Sky Howard from Kenton Ridge in eight. Set. Alicia Reddick's got the bandana there, already pushing hard, chest out making his way around that first curve. Here comes the straightaway, the back straightaway. Lanes four and five appear to be, lane five is my guess right now is who we have in the lead. That's Kale Wilson. He comes in with a 49.68. Jacob Martin of Finneytown next to him in four with a 49.39. And it's Martin from Finneytown with a big F on his chest and his hair flying. Going to be challenged, though, by Wilson in five. We don't want to miss out, though, Elisha Reddick from Elida. Great run, Elisha. Glad to see you making it this far. He's going to come back for the next two years. Let's see what his time was. Let's see if it comes in there. Our top finishers, Wilson got first, Martin second, Young is third, and Mayfield is fourth. Our Elida runner finishes in sixth. Event 15, the girls' 300-meter hurdles in lane one. It's Proctor of Meadowdale. Lane two, Altenburg of Oakwood. Lane three, Sandker of Bethel Tate. In lane four, Kylie Adams of Bellefontaine, hoping that she can be out there 
Yes, we do see her out there in lane four. Lane five, Callie Shoemaker of Bell Fountain. Lane six, Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan. Lane seven, Miriam Garrett of Versailles. And lane eight, Gwyneth Faust of Bath. Set. Miriam Garrett out there in lane seven from Versailles, hitting it hard right there at the beginning. Looks like she may be in second place right now. Of course, we've got a stagger here, so it isn't exactly easy to see. We can see, though, that Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain looking very strong right now. As we talked about before, she missed that 100 uh, hamstring. You can see she's got something on her leg there, but she is running a great race. Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain racing her way almost. Last hurdle over it. She is your regional champion. Let's take a look at the results and see who else we had in that finish. So Adams first. Henderson from Benjamin Logan finishing in second. Sandker is third. And your fourth place finisher from Bell Fountain, it's Shoemaker. So the two Bell Fountain runners and Benjamin Logan making their way next week to Dayton. Event 16, the boys 300 meter hurdles. Our eyes are on lane two, Ethan Cole from Bath and lane six, Dane Dooling from Ottawa Glandorf. We also have from Wasion, Seth Riker in lane one. Here's your other runners, Wasion in one, Bath in two. Bird from Taft in three, Barnes from Pontes in four, Hubanks from Batavia in five, Dane Dooling from Ottawa Glandorf in six, Huffman from Waynesville in seven and Shepard from Batavia in eight. First over the hurdle looked to be Barnes in four. Of course, we're watching Dueling in six from OG and Cole in two from Bath. Look at Ethan Cole from Bath. Check him out, lane two, Ethan Cole from Bath, currently in second place. One more hurdle to go. And he's going to finish in second place, folks. Bath's Ethan Cole runs a 39-23 for a second place finish and an automatic bid to Dayton next week at Welcome Stadium. Still waiting to see who our fourth place finisher is there. We had Hugh Banks first, Bats Cole is second, Barnes was third, and our fourth place final automatic qualifier is waiting on this board to let us know. Quick reminder as we're holding, waiting for this to let you know that Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken updates you with all the area scores with the WSN Scores app. Download the free app from Android or Apple stores or visit WSNtop.tv. All right, Shepard is the one that got that fourth bid. He is from Batavia Dueling from Ottawa Glandor, finishing in fifth. Event 17, it's the girls' 800-meter run. And we want to remind you our title sponsor for the D2 regional track here in Pequa is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Our runners are in lane one, Bryn Hurst of Archbold. Also, Brumbaugh of Milton Union. Lane two, Georgia Bates of Benjamin Logan. Also, Neff Isom of Oakwood. Lane three, McConnell of Nicholsville. Growl of Taylor. Four is Irwin of Oakwood. Leroy of Madeira. Five is Gross of Carroll. Grosser of Roger Bacon. In six, Reagan Rash of Indian Lake. And Liana Fordman from Ottawa Glandorf, the freshman. Lane seven, Erbach of Waynesville. And Erbach of Waynesville. And in lane eight, it's Huddle of Napoleon and Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glandorf. This is only two laps around the track.
top seed time is Samantha Erbach, the senior Erbach from Waynesville with a 2.15.02. We've got quite a few 2.19 times coming in, 2.20 and 2.22. Quite a bunched up group over here as they make their way over towards lane one. Both those OG girls right up there. They've been training partners all year long. A senior and a freshman, of course, Corinne Clausen ran with Liana's older sister, Alexa. We're hoping to talk with Alexa during the 3200 in just a little bit. Pretty neat. Samantha Erbach is your current leader. And our current second place runner is Ella McConnell of McNichols. Both of those OG girls still up there, still pushing, still pulling, and now starting to make that run, make that move. Remember, it's only the top four that get the automatic seed to state. I wish I could explain to you the grit that it takes to do this part of this race. This is such a grueling race, the 800. Folks, right now we've got Ottawa Glendorf in fourth and in fifth place. Who's going to hold on to get that automatic qualifying bid to go? And I believe that was Liana Fortman. Let's watch the final time to see what we've got. Erbach and Erbach, the sisters, I'm assuming they're sisters at 214, 215, solid great runs. And that is Liana Fortman with a 217.48. The freshman Fortman is making her way to state in the 800. Corinne Clausen from OG, a stellar run as well, 218.28 to finish in fifth place. Event 18, it's the boys' 1800 meter run. Our eyes are on lane three, Mason Vogt of Ottawa Glandorf, lane five, Isaac Mackey of Ottawa Glandorf, and lane eight, Rylan Miller of Van Wert. Here's who we have running Kitchen from Eaton in one, Coleman from CHCA in one, Strom of Ostigo in two, Nicklof of New Richmond in two, is Mason Vogt of Ottawa Glandorf in three. Next to him is Rutiga of Meadowdale, Jansen of Carroll in four, Walton of Valley View. Then it's Isaac Mackey of Ottawa Glandorf in five, Keys from Springfield Shawnee next to him. Him. Schweikart of Bethel and Taylor from Indian Hill in six. Cox from Kenton Ridge and Tipton in Brookville in eight. Rylan Miller of Van Wert and Flandermeyer of Batavia. It's a flying two laps around the track. Everybody calls this middle distance, but folks, this is really close to a sprint. And we're going to see that when they make their way around that first 400. Top time coming in is a 156.37. Andrew Jansen from Carroll. We got some great times coming in from our runners. OG runners with a 157 and 159. Our Van Runt runner also with a 157. Less than a lap to go, and we really have starting to get a little bit of spread out there. But it's going to be interesting to see who's got the kick to make it into the end. This back stretch is where you got to make your move. This is the spot to get past because these guys don't want to get stuck in the third or fourth lane running around that outer edge, which right now is going to happen for some of these guys. Now they're settling in, they're moving their way in, and they're spreading out. Our first place runner, second place runner, third place runner. That second place runner is moving up on him and passing. It's really going to come to our race for fourth, folks. The fourth place race is just now being decided to. 152 was your whole, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, that is fast. 152, 16 was Jansen from Carroll. Ostigo gets second. Indian Hill gets third. And Flandermeyer from Batavia finishes in fourth. The presenting sponsor of the D2 Regional Track Meet in Piqua is Lodix Jewelry. Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lodix.com.
Girls 200 meter dash, lane one, it's Sierra Grieber from St. Mary's. Two is Mompa from Madeira. Lane three, Macy Johnson of Van Wert. Four is Coleman from Kenton Ridge. Lane five, Tatum Walsh of Bell Blath. Bath, sorry folks, Bath. Lane six, Ava Reeves of Bell Fountain. Seven is Caldwell of Meadowdale. And eight is Kendra Deering of Van Wert. Macy Johnson currently in that second place spot and will finish in the second place spot as well. Looks like Sierra Grieber of St. Mary's may have gotten third place, but let's watch this finished result to know for sure. It was Coleman from Kenton Ridge first, Johnson from Van Wert second. That was not St. Mary's in third, unfortunately. So many people, but Walsh from Bath finishing in fourth, so she gets her second automatic qualification run to state she won the 400 earlier and she finished in fourth here johnson second walsh in fourth it's the boys 200 meter dash in lane one it's ethan brown of bethel lane two matthew wright of deer park lane three Devonte young of dunbar lane four coy hire of brookville lane five peyton mayfield of milton union lane six xavier wilson of thurgood Marlington, Lane 7, Tayana Turner of Shamanat Julian, and Lane 8, Dawson Muncie of Indian Hill. Well, we're watching these guys run. I just want to let you know that Bath, Bath High Jump, Brennan Ryan finished in first place. He's heading to state. He cleared six foot three inches. Defiance's Evan Dalton was in second. You can see all of the results on Mile Split Ohio, that'll lead you to the finish timing where you can see all of the results. And of course, this weekend, the state qualifiers will also be posted at OHSAA. Top runner here was higher from Brookville with a time of 21.20. Event number 21 is coming up next. It's the girls' 3,200-meter run. Our title sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring rest resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Girls, 3,200-meter run Stay is coming up. We are watching Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf in lane three. Next to her is Ella Rhodes of Wauseon. Then out in seven, it's Nicolette Stickney of Bryan, Grace Brown of Bell Fountain in eight, and Kate Thormeyer also of Bryan out in the outer edge. Here's who we have running overall. Davis of New Richmond, Sterbling of Bethel Tate, Weeble of Valley View, place. Nash from Grand Ottawa Local, Landorf. Anna Buttlemeyer from Ottawa Glandorf, Ella Rhodes from Wauseon. Thurman from Carroll, Erbach from Waynesville, Brosh of Wilmington, Kitchen. Clark of Greenan, Cahill of Oakwood, Abney of New Richmond, Ballin of Brookville, Stickney of Bryan, Brown of Bell Fountain, and Thormeyer of Bryan. Eight laps around the Bethel, track. So far we got one runner making her move right from the and start, but then a big Batavia, group of David ladies Flandermeyer. back there in the pack. Our top time coming in, in is Hill, Samantha Erbach Miles of Waynesville Taylor. with an 11.22.50. We already watched and her run in the 800. Well, I'm pleased to have Alexa Fordman with me right here up on top of the press box here in Pequa. Last year at this time, we were watching Alexa get ready to go on to state. She has just finished her first year at Belmont. And as I'm saying that, I just want to mention Anna Buttemeyer moving her way right there, tucking in next to the leader as those ladies get ready to finish their first lap. Alexa, so glad to have you here today. Thanks for being spending a little bit of time with me up here, top, top of the world here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So first year of Belmont University is finished, division one running. You were a year round runner, right? Tell me, tell me what you participated in throughout this past year. I did cross country, indoor, and then outdoor track. So I was in season all year round this year. All year round. And you're in Nashville, Tennessee. So a little bit of a drive. Couldn't really come home on the weekends all the time. Um, beautiful area, of course. So let's talk a little bit just about the transition. What's it like moving from high school running, top level high school running into division one running? 
it was a hard adjustment, especially those first couple races, because you come in high school and you can just show up to a meet and kind of run it how you want. You can lead it in that way. And college, you're lining up in a race and all the girls run about the same times mm. as you and the strategies are completely different. So it was hard to kind of accept that and be like, OK, you're not going to come in and be at the top right away. Sure, but you really have had some. I, I had I enjoyed following your times, and Get it was rich, great to see you do well. You had a lot of nice top ten you. finishes, Get like in rich, cross country, even higher in track. You. you know, really making it up there on the podium. How did it feel to be moving into that next level where you aren't just getting on a bus and going maybe an hour down the road, but you're getting on an airplane and you're flying places? Yeah, it was exciting. And in college, you're just focusing more on one race. So it was like you're going all the way to California to just run an 800. So really just taking the time to focus and make the most of that opportunity that you had there. So in high school, you you, know, you did 400s and 800s mainly. Um, when you came in, did did your coach basically say, we're going to make you a, an 800 runner is what we're looking at for you? Was that kind of what it was? Yeah, pretty much. They're kind of like, um, we're going to more shift the focus to the 8, maybe potentially the 15 in the years to come. So really? just kind of moving up a little bit, which is common in college a lot of. My teammates have done that shift already. What was training like for you? Um, you're right there on campus, so you're right there on your training facilities. A lot of weightlifting, a lot of, you know, how many hours were you putting in on your training? Um, we'd have practice pretty much six days a week uh, running, and then we'd lift two days a week. So it was a lot, and it was just a lot more miles than I was used to in high school during cross country, mm -hmm. which is also a big jump. But it was good. It really built my base up and helped with that. Can you, is there any memories you have? Are there any races or any locations hey where you went this past dash. year that really Finish were just a neat place. environment or a no neat fountain. experience? Um, our conference for cross country was actually at our home course and we won that year, so this year. So it was really exciting to just have Kendrick all of our um, support from the community and from Belmont it come be able to watch us win NBCs, which was a lot of fun. Caldwell. That's great. Um, now, cross country, you mentioned that you moved up in, mi in mileage, that. didn't you? They, they run a little bit further than they do here in cross country in high school. Yeah, up to a 6K in college. And I feel like the college courses were a little more difficult than the ones I used to. A lot more hills and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your just your academics. Now, what are you majoring in and what, what were the classes like this year? I major in exercise science with a minor in sports administration. Um, I brought in a lot of credits from high school, so most of my gen eds are knocked out, which is nice. So there's a lot of just like major specific classes, which was helpful. So I was actually interested in what I was learning, which is good. That's great. Yeah, good professors probably, and a nice environment of people who all have that same focus and that same same thing. Um, Will you have an opportunity, I suppose it's probably too early to ask this, but will you have an opportunity to maybe um, graduate early because of those credits coming in, or will you probably stick out all four years, you think? I can get my undergrad early, but I'm going to try to stay and run for four yeah. and get a master's or something. Well, and that's probably a good idea, too, because just how your thoughts on now being a college athlete and a high academic. I know in high school you graduated valedictorian, you know, you achieved so much, but you're at the next level of everything, and what is it like to juggle that with the Division One athletics and the classes. Yeah, it was a big balancing act, which I was used to from high school. I'd taken a lot of classes. Um, and honestly, in high college, I had a lot more free time because college mm. like classes aren't as long. And that was helpful. But when we we're traveling and missing multiple days a week, it was hard. You had to make sure you got your homework done while you were traveling. It wasn't just a free vacation all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, hey, so we're here at the uh, regionals. And the 800 was just run a little while ago. By the way, Anna Buttlemeyer is still doing really great right there. You see her halfway to go. and. Uh, strong running there by that entire group 800 just happened this would have been your race last year it was your sister's race this year Liana Fortman the freshman from Ottawa Glendor finishing in fourth place what was it like to watch your sister just a little while ago it was exciting I was getting pretty nervous for her because the race was really close but I was so happy for her she that was a big goal she set for this year to get to the state meet so to be able to watch her achieve that after all the hard work was awesome that's great how fun to have another Fortman for us to be able to watch um, I have to admit that when I was watching her run sometimes it's hard for me to uh, designate who was who down there but I recognize the Fortman running style right from the beginning <laughs> um, let's also talk about let's talk about God you know that's one of the things that we've had a great opportunity to talk about over the years and I've always been so um, just impressed with your willingness to speak out about the importance of following God and how have you recognized Boys, how important it is to follow dash, God as you've just finished your first year of Bethel. college well, I truly feel like God called me to Belmont. Picking colleges, like I 
didn't really know why I should go there, but I prayed about it a lot and felt like that was where he led me. And even through all the hard times, like there's a lot of struggles freshman year, just adjusting to everything. And I really questioned why I would be there and I kind of wanted to go home. But I had to stay true to my faith and remember that where God calls you, like he's going to provide. And while I might not be able to see it right away, like he's working all things for his good and I have to just trust in that process. You said something really important. While you might not be able to see it right away, you have to keep trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. Um, Is there an FCA group in your area? Is there anything that's been an opportunity for you to be connected with people? Yeah, that's been one really good thing about going to Belmont. There's FCA is so strong. I really like our leader. He gets us together and we do a lot of volunteer work through it and just group Bible studies. And I've gotten really involved with my church small group as well, which has been so good to be with other believers. Wonderful. That's great. So what's summer like for you now? Uh, do you have running? Do you, you're working? Do you get a break? What do you do? What, what does a D1 athlete do in the summertime when she doesn't have to be in Tennessee training? <laughs> A little bit of a break. We'll start running here in the next week or so, get back at it. But a lot of relaxing by the pool, hanging out, and just kind of taking a break from all the busyness of the school year. Sounds good. Finally, any advice you can give to these ladies who are running as they get prepared to take that next step and what they need to do next? I would just tell them to make the most of every moment and just really enjoy your high school. And if you want to continue to pursue college, just enjoy it and have fun with it because you only get to do it a couple years and then it's gone. Great. Alexa Fortman, she is the 800 record holder at Belmont University. Hungry for more, so it's going to be exciting to see what she does in this next year. Thank you so much for taking a few moments to talk with us. Yes, thank you. All right, as you can see, folks, we are down to just two laps here in the girls' 3,200 top four runners auto qualify to state. 320 and first. Top runner right now is Samantha Erbach from Waynesville. She's the one that comes in with that 1122.5. She is a senior. Starting to see him pick up just, just a little bit here as the ladies getting close to having about 150 left to go. And you can see that move is being made there on that back stretch to move into the third place spot. Only top four get that automatic qualifying bid to make it to the University of Dayton next week. And it is the UD next week, Welcome Stadium, instead of OSU. For so many years, we've been at Jesse Owens Stadium at The Ohio State University, but due to some remodeling work that's being done on their track, it was necessary for OHSAA to find a new location. So we're excited to be at Welcome Stadium this year. The, uh, the schedule is going to be just a little bit different than what we've had in the past. It's starting on Thursday evening with Division Three prelims as well as field events. Division Two prelims will be Friday morning, and we will be bringing those to you. We will have the Division Two prelims, the full races for you on WSN. We will also have the Division Three prelims and the Division Three finals. All right, this is it. This is the final 400. Your number one runner is moving herself away from the pack, but who is going to get two, three, and four? That's going to be the, the question we have yet to answer as we watch them see what they have in those final, final less, than, less than a lap. The wind has picked up just a little bit. The sun has gone behind the clouds, making for uh, some pleasant weather here for these distant runners. All right, we're taking a look there at the second, third, and fourth place races. Anna Buttlemeyer just really having a great season so far, really has had a, uh, a great year, a great weekend, we should say a great week. Haven't had a chance to mention that the Ottawa Glendorf girls, man, ran a blistering fast 9.18.09 to get first place in the four by eight a couple days ago. Wow, take a look at this battling for a second. Anna Buttlemeyer just by a stride right now. Nice, pushing her way in toward the end. Solid, strong strides there. May have gotten third at the last moment. Let's take a look and see. So Erbach gets first. It was Cahill from Oakwood second. Buttlemeyer from Ottawa Glandorf is in third place. And your fourth place automatic qualifier is Sterbling from Bethel Tate.
The boys' 3,200-meter run is next. Our presenting sponsor is Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Ward or online at Lodix.com. Here's who we have running locally in this race. In lane three, Hayden Moss of Bell Fountain. Lane four, Ty Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf. In lane six, Owen Scott of Van Wert. Seven, Tony Stewart of Bell Fountain. Xander Fackler from Bryan in eight, and Mason Ayers of Coldwater also in eight. Overall, here's who we have in this race. Lytle from Urbana. Fainstock of Marymont. King of Waynesville. Guckerman of CHCA. Kramer of Carroll. Moss of Bell Fountain. Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf, Erickson of Marymont, Malcolm of Waynesville, Bert of McNichols, Scott of Van Wert, Dunn from Baden, Garland of Valley View, Stewart of Bell Fountain, Fackler of Bryan, and Ayers of Coldwater. Owen Scott, I noticed, changed his shirt there. He's wearing a red shirt now, but he still has his standard sunglasses and his braids. He's currently sitting about fifth or sixth place. Of course, this is eight laps, so lots and lots of time for these guys to set up their race plans. Folks, I'm not sure if I see Ty Rosengarten there, there or not from Ottawa Glandorf. He did qualify for state in his last race. Um, now I am from a lot farther away than the rest of you, so my view is much smaller than, but, but I am not seeing him out there. Perhaps I am wrong. Here is what I'm not wrong about though. I'm gonna give you some results as we watch these guys make their ways around the track. Jacob O'Neill will update us on our leaders as things move on in the shot i'm sorry in the girls discus throw your top four finishers fourth place madeira alexis robinson of bell fountain finished in third and kelsey snap of bell fountain finished in second so two bell fountain runners will make or i'm sorry rather throwers i know the throwers don't usually want to be runners the throwers will make their way to state next week and your champion here in this field event is brooke simon from ostego bring up some more results for you first place right now with number 410 on his back it's Xander Fackler from Brian he does come in with the top seed time of a 9 36 26 here's your top times overall Ty Rosengarten with a 9 42 like I said I'm, I'm struggling to see him in this race Bell Fountain's Tony Stewart comes in with a 9.56.64. Owen Scott of Van Wert, a 9.44.23. And Owen Scott is, looks like he is making a move right now, moving himself into that third flash fourth position. You can see him with the sunglasses, the braids, and the bright red jersey, but it is still Xander Fackler from Bryan. Giving a shout out to Xander's hair. If you heard me do much commentating, I love to give hair awards. He's got that flying hair, and uh, it's not slowing him down one bit. Owen Scott really looking strong right now as he runs. Straight ahead, head is straight. Um, moving now into the second place spot as Xander has moved down into the third place spot. What was that again, Jacob? Jacob is giving me numbers here. 336 on the back of the jersey, and that is Nicholas Dunn of Baden. Nicholas Dunn comes in with a 10.24.24 is what he ran last week. Maybe he was just doing what he needed to do to get into his spot, or maybe he'll make a change. Remember, we still have four more laps here, so there is still plenty of running left to be done. You can see all of the results at finish timing or at um, Mile Split Ohio in order to uh, see who moved on. You can also go to the OHSAA website and that will also give you information on who has moved on to next week. In the girls' long jump, I'm going to try and bring up some results the best I can while we are watching these. Oh, wait. Let's take a look. Oh, and Scott, look at him. Oh, and interesting. Usually don't see a lot of runners looking back behind, but you did just see that second place runner do that. Oh, and Scott just did it just again. And now we got Xander back in the front. You know, this is what I love about this point in the track season. 
This is a race all the way through to the end, the 3200. It's not like what you see in some of those dual meets or even some of the invitationals where one person runs away from it and then the next group is halfway around the track behind. We have a race going with six guys right here changing the lead here and there. And the cool thing about distance runners, really the cool thing about runners overall, distance runners know each other well. They have a respect for each other. Some of them even try to train with each other, even though they have to run against each other. Owen Scott making his move again. It was fun last year at State watching Owen Scott lead uh, one of his races for a while. I'm looking forward to seeing him again this year at State as well. Owen Scott moving back into that first place spot and holding on to it now. And second from Oakwood, Delaney Cahill. Three laps is what they're going to be looking at left to go. Three laps to, to go, and it still could be anyone's seconds. race Jordan here with three laps Samantha to go. Herbach. The girls' long jump, here's your four top four qualifiers. Now, Savannah Recker from Ottawa Glandorf got fifth. Don't forget, there are some extra people who will time in or, or jump in or height in, um, but it's the top four finishers at each regional that have the automatic qualifying. And it's two Bell Fountain girls finishing in fourth and third in the long jump. Kylie Adams and Ava Reeves. We've heard those names in the running races as well. Isabel Henderson, another name we've been saying a lot in the running races. Benjamin Logan, she finishes in second. So two Bell Fountain girls, one Benjamin Logan, and then Olivia Hill from Wyoming make your top four in the girls' long jump. In, in the boys' shot put, I'll tell you that in just a moment. We've had another change in leader. Tony Stewart of Bell Fountain has now taken the lead. Owen Scott is in second from Van Wert, and Xander Fackler from Bryan is trying to hold on to third. Tony Stewart of Bell Fountain really kicking it in. Oh man, let's take a look at him. He has just extended his stride, moving things up. He knows he's got 800 to go. Owen Scott is in third. Xander Fackler has dropped down to fifth. 800 left to go, less than two laps for these young men. In the boys' shot put, your top four finishers, Stacy from Brookville in fourth, Dixon from Springfield, Shawnee in third. It's Hayden Manns from Bell Fountain in second. He's heading to Dayton. And Nathan Hartling from Greenan was the champion. In the girls' pole vault, Another change here. Nicholas Dunn of Baden has just taken over the lead. I'm looking forward to seeing what Nicholas's time is, and I'm going to have to do some research on him to see what his normal time is because he comes in with a 10-24-24, running a great race. Tony Stewart of Bell Fountain is in second. Owen Scott of Van Wert is in third. few more results to give you. These are from Wednesday. I did tell you that Ottawa Glandorf's girls finished first in the 4x800 relay. Waynesville was second, Oakwood was third, Carroll was fourth, and Versailles was fifth. In the boys 4x8, it was Carroll in first, Ottawa Glandorf second, Indian Hill third, and Batavia was in fourth. In the boys discus throw was Bell Fountain's Hayden Manns was your champion. In the girls high jump, Wyoming's Penelope Webb was the champion. In the boys' long jump, Milton Union Mayfield was first place. Indian Lakes Clay got fourth. In the girls' shot putt, Kelsey Snap from Bell Fountain finished in second place, so she is going to state. And in the boys' pole vault, New Richmond's Harrison finished in first. Wow, take a look at what has happened now in this final lap. Look at this strong runner making his way into the finish. Just doesn't look like he has any steam going away. He is just picking up the pace, really moving in strong to make his way into that finish line. 
Going to be a challenge. Well, was going to be a race for second, but I think it looks like Bell Fountain is third. Owen Scott is working to hold on to fourth, and Xander from Bryan is trying to get him to get that automatic spot, but Owen Scott is going to get in. He's going to get that fourth place spot. So it's done in first place with a 9.32 from Baden. Literally ran almost 50 seconds faster than when he ran last week. Second place is... Fainstock of Marymount. Third place. Waiting to see here. You can watch these other runners pushing their way in as we're waiting on these results here. It's Stewart in third place from Bell Fountain. So Tony Stewart from Bell Fountain has automatically made his way to state. And Scott from Van Wert finishes in fourth with a 939.44. And Fackler from Brian will finish in fifth. Time now for event 23, the girls 4 by 400 meter relay. Our title sponsor in our D2 regional track meet here in Piqua is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor, automated, automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens. That's Ultimate Outdoor. In the girls four by four, our eyes are on lane two, Versailles, lane five, Bath, and lane six, Ottawa Glandorf. Your overall competitors are as follows. In lane one, Meadowdale. Lane two, Versailles. Lane three, Madeira. Lane four, Oakwood. Lane five, Bath. Lane six, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane seven, Fenwick. And lane eight, Carroll. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. On your mark. Stand up. Runners, stand in your lane. On your mark. Set. Set. Top seed time coming in is lane four, Oakwood. Four minutes flat, point nine four. Your next fastest is Ottawa Glandorf in six with a 4.02.11. And then it's Bath with a 4.03.58. Remember, these ladies will stay in their lanes for this first lap of this race. The four by 400. Just a few days, we're going to be down in Dayton at Welcome Stadium, surrounded by so many people. The roar of the crowd will be intense, and it will be so exciting. TV44 and WSN, excited to follow these state track runners all the way to the end, and we're happy that we're going to be able to be at Welcome Stadium next week, and we hope that you will be watching as well. We are watching these first leadoff runners get ready to hand off. First runner to hand off was Ottawa Glandorf, 
and a nice kickoff by that second runner now moving her way around the, the race. Certainly so much fun last year to watch these Ottawa Glendorf girls at state in their relays. Had a great time talking with Alexa Fortman just a little while ago on the 3200. She was such a key part of these relays last year, but also it's been really exciting to be able to watch these OG girls be so successful this year as well. A lot of these runners making their way down to state. Take a look at Bath right now. Moore's in third place, now moving over into second place. Really so fun to watch Bath have such a strong year this year too. Tatum Walsh winning the 400 in these this regional meet. OG just doing a quick look to see what's going on as Bath is challenging to take over that spot. OG still with the leading point here and is gonna pass off in first place. OG is first, Bath is second. Top four finishers, automatic qualifiers to the prelims next week, which will be Friday morning at Welcome Stadium. from CHCA, Nate Gockerman. Oh, these ladies are really taking advantage of this back straight away. You can tell by taking a look at the length of the stride because this is where they can use their body inertia just to make up some ground back there as they get ready to power around here for that 200. Now we're seeing a lead change happening right now. In second for Marima, Ben Fanescott. A new first place runner, a new first place team right now, but we still have Ottawa Glendorf for in second. Bath, a very close behind third place. Here we go, folks. Chasing them down. And you can see that already happen right now with Bath. Bath moving into second place at this point. Wow, look what Bath's doing right now. It's gonna come down to this final 100. Take a look at her go. Look at her go. And the other runner's trying to hold on, but isn't gonna happen. Bath currently leading. Is it gonna be Bath as a championship or is she gonna be in second place? All this is gonna come down to the end. What a race, what a race by these ladies. Our Bath team finishing in second place. Oakwood does get first, but Bath gets second. And Ottawa Glandor finishing in third place. So both Bath and Ottawa Glandorf are automatic qualifiers to head to Dayton next week. Madeira finishing in second for sales is in sixth. Our final event in the OHSAA Region 8 Division 2 Regionals from Pickle High School is event 24, the boys 4x400 meter relay. And our eyes are on lane two, Ottawa Glandorf. The runners are lane one, Meadowdale. Lane two, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane three, Miami East. Lane four, Brookville. Lane five, Carroll. Lane six, Batavia. Lane seven, Valley View. And lane eight, Kenton Ridge. Set. Team scores at this point with 16 of 17 events scored in the girls. Third place, Waynesville with 47. Second place, Bell Fountain with 60. And first place with 16 of 17 events scored, Ottawa Glandorf. In the boys with 16 of 17 events scored. In third place, Waynesville. Second place, Carroll. And first place, Batavia. Like I said, lane two is Ottawa Glandorf. And we are cheering on our hometown uh, team here, Ottawa Glandorf in lane two trying to get another team, another relay to state. Really gonna be a lot of fun this next week as we get to watch the Bath runners, we get to watch Ottawa Glandorf runners. Second runners now with the handoff, still in their lanes, but soon they'll be moving over into that first lane. Top seed time coming in is Brookville. They were in lane four with a 3.22.39.
Our planned coverage next week includes full coverage of the Division Three prelims, which will happen on Thursday. Full coverage of the Division Two prelims, which will happen on Friday morning. Full coverage of the Division Three finals, which will happen on Friday evening. And a special highlight show with interviews of the Division Two finals, which will be happening on Saturday morning. We're also planning special highlight shows, including um, field events, which will start with Division Three. All of this will be airing on WOSN. Don't forget, you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. I also want to remind you that WTLW and WOSN are viewer-supported nonprofit TV stations. We exist thanks to your support. Perhaps you would like to support this TV station with a, a donation in any amount as a way to say thank you for broadcasting this event and so many other events. You can go to axeministries.com and this and you can donate at any time, axeministries.com, or you call us at 419-339-439. 44-44. All right, Audrey Glander, I've still got some ground to make up, but really did make up some ground in that last thing. One, two, three, four, five. Sixth place right now is where they are. Sixth place is the current spot. Watching that back straight away. Getting close to moving to fifth. Eyeing on fourth. Oh, take a look. I love it when this happens. I love it when the, the, the anchor runner just comes in and does his thing. Ottawa Glander battling, battling for that fourth place spot right now. Battling. Dropping down maybe into, maybe into slight fifth. Oh, so much muscle with these guys trying to make their way in. Ottawa Glendorf Titans pushing their way. Going to finish in fifth place. Won't get that automatic qualifying bid, but we'll have to wait and see if they get an at-large bid. Your winner in this race was Brookville, finishing in three minutes, 21.16 seconds. Carroll was second, Batavia was third, Valley View was fourth, and Ottawa Glandor fifth with a 324.42. And that's going to be it, folks. That's going to wrap it up for us at the D2 Regional Track Meet in Piqua. Our next stop, and for many of you, your next stop will be Welcome Stadium in Dayton. And that's where we will be heading next week. Don't forget, we are still able to take some sponsorships. So if you'd like to get your business involved in a sponsorship with our state coverage, just give us a call at 419-339-4444. Ask for our sales department, and they will give you all of the details. But that's a wrap for us here in Piqua. For Jacob O'Neill, everyone at WOSN, I am Jennifer Beck. Thanks so much for being with us so far at this point in our track season. One more week to go. We're excited to follow these runners, your runners, all the way to the end. If you're watching the D2 Regional Track Meet from Piqua High School right here on WOSN.